Hey, Pussy, no Pussy Net. New little video on the Self Reliance uh, Medicine Project. Uh, on this one, I'm missing some stuff because uh, uh, I have to buy it, and so I'm waiting for for it to come. Because uh, have your Americans are so lucky. <laughs> It's a small border to cross over, but there's a lot of medical gear that I have to buy from a super person. And the other side, you go on the website, you order, you receive it. Uh, there's not even a package I order. I, I didn't bother going to grab it because I would have to go to the custom and everything. Anyway, so <sighs> I should move to the States. <laughs> anyway, the subject that we're going to talk uh, today. Uh, so we'll make it more speak, but uh, there will be a contest attached uh, for this one. So when I get my, and I'll, I'll mention a little bit of contest, but I'll make a official announcement once I get uh, the stuff that I will, I'll be talking about. We'll be talking about pretty much two subjects uh, quickly uh, today. And basically it will be triage and uh, the... Um, I was reading, uh, so I received a, a new book, uh, The Fundamental Disaster Management, uh, and it's made from the Society of Critical Care Medicine, and it's pretty much more the ICU perspective, so an intensive care unit perspective on disaster, and, but it is pretty, actually it's very interesting, like the first night that I read that, I read like almost half of the book, it was very interesting. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about triage because it may happen and as also we kind of mentioned earlier that we may have to do a triage. Um, so there's kind of three levels of triage and they mentioned about it here. So they mentioned there's kind of, and again this is oriented towards disaster, but you'll understand, I'll read one definition, you'll kind of understand why I'm using this in the kind of situation that we would have. Because uh, in self-reliance medicine, you don't have enough resource. Just like if a big disaster would happen, you wouldn't have enough resource. Just, just like the medical system would struggle to try to find its own resource. Um, you, in your own little microclimate of not having access to the resource or not being able to, to get to the resource, you're still suffering from the same thing. So it, that's why it's kind of almost like a, a nice parallel to do. So there's kind of three, three, three type of triage to do uh, in a disaster. Uh, so first of all, uh, what is a triage? And basically triage is a French word and it was started around the uh, his name was Baron Dominique Jean Larrey, and he was the Napoleon Imperial Guard um, chief chief surgeon. So that was in 1792. So basically, uh, during the Napoleonic uh, War, what this guy would do is basically decide who would look very bad and uh, who look salvageable and we, they could do something about it. If you couldn't do anything about it, anything to you, then it was a waste of, of stuff. And so basically, uh, triage consists of two primary components, sorting and prioritizing patient and managing scarce resource to optimize their use. So there's, like what I was saying, there's kind of three type of triage. There's the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. Um, so the primary is the one that you do like in the field. So in, in a disaster would be, for example, the first unit of um, emergency medical uh, people that would get there and they would start um, separating people in different category. The second one would be at the hospital in emergency where they would allow them certain beds and some other people would go maybe more on the unit and not stay in the emergency. The sick one would really stay in emergency and stuff. And then the third one would be a more uh, backstage kind of as that if for example more when you're getting and that's where that book talks a little bit more about uh, because it's um, more ICU oriented. Uh, the one that they talked about more is now you need um, now you need to have um, you have like one ventilator. You have three patients. Which ventilator do you give to? 
whatever patient because all of them so they they survived the basically they survived the first triage they survived the second triage but now you know we did some stuff to them so that there's you know there's maybe a chance so do who do i give the stuff and that's where we were talking in the last talk about um ethics and palliative care that's where things start to to get you're still going to do you may have to do primary but primary is more if you have multiple victims so if, unless you have a situation when you have multiple victims in a survival situation or in self-reliance situation, sorry, then you, there's very unlikely that you'll do those ones. But in uh, self-reliance, even with one patient, you can still apply the concept of triage into your, vic your, your person that you have injured to like decide. Do I allocate the resource to this person or not? And this is why I'm talking about triage, is to decide. So, for example, when we were talking last time about the big burns, if if this person have only 10% chance survival, am I gonna spend pretty much a lot of NL, a lot of my analgesic, a lot of my supplies for dressings, a lot of my stuff for somebody that may not make it and if I decide to not do that what is the proper palliative care do I hold off food as well because supplies that, that's another one food will be a supply as the other one but uh, so that's why the triage really helps so for example the one that is mostly used and kind of been showed off in, in studies is still, it's called the job uh, the start uh, start one and the jump start one is for pediatric and so basically what it is is a um, quick quick so there's always about four categories in triage uh, so the first one is what we call minor so basically people are walking their their chance of survival are very great and they don't really need your help so they maybe have like a laceration on their arm or whatever but as long as they can walk so those are the green ones uh, the disease are black, so they're totally the opposite of the green. So you have the green over here, and you have the black over here on the on the. So the black, you don't even allow your resource and stuff. Again, we're in a different mindset here. If somebody would be dead on the scene, and it's the only person. You'll have all the resource, uh, then you have all the resources that you can. Those people will have like full attention on us. And then it's in the, the middle one that is a little bit harder and it's called immediate and delayed. And immediate means that they need care like right away. So they're, so they're about to jump to the, the, the black. Uh, so from less to more severe, you get the green. It's a little bit the same thing as uh, the light on, uh, on the street. So green, yellow and red. Uh, so and black is is your dead uh, so um, so here for example they uh, check right away you check your breathing you check uh, uh, the, the, the cap refill or if they have a pulse or and you check for example what's your mental status and based on that you decide right away uh, what what you're doing so which category they go in the pediatric because pediatric breeds a little bit quicker or they have different uh, heart rates and stuff they did another one called jumpstart which is the same concept as start but jumpstart so but the one that we're going to talk about and i'm going to put on there is uh tertiary and the reason that i'm putting tertiary is because it's more allocation of resource in um hard situation like we're talking about so I just wanted to mention quickly, and I'll put the link a little bit more on, on information and stuff on the uh, triage tools that uh, I, I recommend uh, based on what I've been reading lately and stuff. Uh, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about, and again in this book, and actually if you have extra money, um, this book was pretty cool. It was about, I think it was 70 bucks. And uh, I'll put the link where you can find it. Uh, but it... It is oriented towards ICU, but it, it actually talks very nicely of disaster. It's pretty, like, it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, cool stuff about to talk about. And uh, just seeing here, um, I talked about that before, that burn um, little diagram that's in there. So, 
because uh, I didn't finish reading all the book yet and stuff. Uh, anyway, so the next subject that I wanted to talk about is decon. And what is decon? And so the contamination of your page, uh, of person. And there's actually a whole chapters on it in there. And actually they even show, uh, there's a whole chapter um, on, on the subject. And they talk about the different prote protection that you need to have. So why are we talking about that here? Like we don't need that stuff. Like we're all going to work. Well, actually we may need. Um, so if you look, depending on what kind of disaster you're talking about, um, uh, so if you're very dark or, or apocalyptic kind of stuff and the incident that's going to make everything collapse will be a, uh, a chemical warfare or everything, it's good to know about decon. Um, I'm more on the medium side, so... I don't really want to talk about that kind of, of stuff, but you know, like it's but it's still important to know decon because what's gonna happen is for example, if you have like something like Katrina hitting and everything, uh you may have like uh, oils and organophosphate or any kind of product all around in your water or something like this. And so for example, if you're if you have like uh, something that a product that just went and somebody fell in the water for whatever reason and it has all this product on them well now you need to decontaminate them before you get them in your house or else your house will be contaminated with the product that they have so it's really important to understand about decon and there is different level of it and um, obviously I don't want to make this a course on decontamination but I want to bring the concept that you kind of have to understand a few uh, about it um, and so basically a lot of time what you'll need and over here actually they talk about uh, the different masks uh, obviously for intubation and stuff but uh, if you have N95 or, uh, or a um, if you look at my video on uh, isolation precautions and stuff uh, you'll see the difference and so if you have those two kind of masks you'll be able to do a lot of that stuff it is but um, having like for example a uh, uh, improviser suit that could look a little bit like a decontamination suit. So, for example, painting suit, or uh, or another like, for example, a uh, rain, you know, those old uh, yellow uh, rain suits. Um, that could be maybe another things. But uh, I would urge you to uh, read a little bit more about it and and uh, get information on what kind of stuff. Uh, to carry, uh, to to decontaminate, and actually, there's a great book that I'll put a link down that talks about a little bit about all those kind of products that can have and uh, what kind of precaution to have with them and stuff. Uh, there's also a course out there on decontamination, but usually they offer it to healthcare professional because that's the one; those are the ones that they would be doing it. But uh, if you can find a good book or like this one, actually explain exactly like how to set up the stuff and everything. In how to clean it's a small stuff but um, start understanding the concept basically the concepts is that easy is that any product is out there can enter a few different ways so we can uh, taste it so go to our mouth so go to a GI tract uh, we can inhalate it uh, it can go through our skin if our skin breaks down it can even go more through the skin um, and can go mostly through our eyes as well. So usually those are the places that you want to uh, block your stuff and everything. So uh, this one was not so much about Decon himself, but to uh, bring to your, your attention that this is a subject that maybe uh, it is important to read on. And I'll put a few uh, reference and stuff so that you make your own reading. But uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call uh, to to call <laughs> to write a message down below and uh, I'll try to answer your question as well obviously I'm not an expert I did get my um, basic training uh, for hospital purpose and stuff um, and plus reading those books but uh, I can help you to hopefully that was helpful and we'll talk to you soon